Stakes. Yep. It's the Tote Sport Dante Stakes. Away they jump. Motivator on the right, leaving the gate. Uh, taking a tug on leaving the stores as Frankie de Torre on Proclamation getting that one settled. Away to the left is Falstaff, who leads with Candidate in the yellow sleeves just dropping in behind him. Motivator on the inside, quite keen. Proclamation is taking charge now. A bit lit up uh, under Frankie, followed by the geezer out wide. And Albert Hall probably is settled as anything at the back of the pack. Proclamation won't settle. It's Falstaff from Proclamation who's doing plenty here. Candidate. Motivation's got plenty of, uh, Motivator's got plenty of cover on the fence there. Johnny Mertz will probably be very pleased about his position at this stage. The geezer in the pale blue cap and Albert Hall last of the six runners. So over on the far side of the Knavesmire, heading towards the seven furlong marker now. Just a medium gallop at this stage. Uh, at best, and Falstaff from Proclamation, who's pulled hard. In third is the Guinness third candidate, followed by the Giza, then Motivator, and finally Albert Hall, shadowing Motivator, watching his every move as they run towards the final four and a half furlongs now, racing left-handed and in fact just about to approach the five. Falstaff from Proclamation, then Candidate, the Giza, Motivator, and finally Albert Hall. The order hasn't changed very much as now they start down the straight. They're coming centre field this time. Still Falstaff, he's being urged to go a little quicker now. Candidate on the right. Proclamation on the near side has run very keen. Motivator on the far side, then the Giza, and Albert Hall only about four lengths off them. An open looking race as they run down inside the final three three furlongs. Candidate joins Falstaff. Motivator moving forward on the far side. The near side. Albert Hall begins to stretch. Proclamation now beginning to pay a price for his early heroics perhaps. Then the geezer between horses. Inside the two. Candidate challenge by Motivator. And Motivator has quickened up well there. He's got his head slightly awkward. In second place the geezer. Then Falstaff. Albert Hall's fallen away. Inside the final furlong. It's Motivator. is just inching away towards the stand side edging right but he's clear of the geezer about a length and a half in front and Motivator maintains his unbeaten record with a stylish win in this Dante Stakes. So it's just the last to leave the stalls in the dark green jacket under Frankie de Tori. Early, early doors it's Adagio in the purple and white colours under Kieran McAvoy who leads to El Shamali. The black colours of proponent is a bit keen. Raincoat locked to out the inside then uh, authorised and finally in the nosebone at the back is Prince Golan. Racing on the far side, Adagio head on one side. He's a bit uh, free on the way to the start. He's uh, keen in the race as well from uh, Al Shamali, proponent to the outside, then uh, authorised Raincoat and Prince Golan as now they race towards the final seven furlongs in this totesport.com Dante Stakes. Adagio by a length to proponent in second place. Al Shamali is third, then the favourite authorised in fourth, followed by Raincoat authorised 11 to 10 on favourite, bidding to cement his position at the head of the Vodafone Derby market here, very cloudy Derby market at the moment, and it's still Adagio that leads as they head towards the home turn. Adagio from Proponent, Adagio's stable companion, Al Shamali, just third on the inside, then authorised, Raincoat, Pink Tap the inside, and Prince Golan. So it's about to unfold up the straight then with just over a half mile left to cover, down the centre once again. Still Adagio from Proponent, in the black jacket, then on the far side, Al Shamali, authorised, getting closer now. We're about to find out what he's made of, then Raincoat and Prince Golan looks the first beat. They're inside the three now. Adagio, proponent, Al Shamali, but Frankie still, he hasn't moved yet on authorised. Raincoat by surely authorised, will pick them up here. He's going very well indeed, going like a, a very good horse as they run inside the final quarter mile and authorised looms up on the near side of Al Shamali and Adagio. Then Raincoat tried to run on. Now Frankie Dottori gets to work. He gives authorised the go-ahead and he kicks clear. He's authorised by three or four Four lengths to Raincoat running on, authorised inside the final 100 yards, well on top, and a very fluent perf performance to win the Dante. They're off, racing for the Betfred Dante over this extended mile and a quarter. And Elm Park made a good start, so too did Lord Ben Stack on the outside, who's settling down in front now from Elm Park. Pulling very hard on the inside there is Nafakar. Racing alongside him is John F. Kennedy. He's quite keen as well. Then wider out then to Jack Hobbs, who's also uh, taking a little bit of a tug early on. Golden Horn has settled now in 
sixth place. And a gap of two or three lengths then back to Old Man River, who's probably about uh, eight lengths off the speed at this stage. They head across the far side of the track towards the final seven furlongs. And Lord Ben Stack leads the Dante field by two lengths. Elm Park racing in second, the Racing Post Trophy winner. Followed by John F. Kennedy, the dark blue jacket. Nafakar still on the inside then for Paul Hannigan. With on the outside, Frankie de Tory and Jack Hobbs. And then two lengths then back to Golden Horn and the Red Cap. And another two and a half lengths then to Old Man River and Joseph O'Brien, who brings up the rear. They've gone quite quickly here as they head down now towards the final five furlongs. Just past the halfway point now in the Brett Fred Dante. So as they're about to turn into the home straight here, it's Lord Ben Stack and Danny Tudhope out in front, being trapped by Andrea Atsini on Elm Park in the sheepskin noseman. John F. Kennedy, the dark blue jacket, pushed along briefly now by Ryan Moore. Jack Hobbs getting into it on the outside there, just carrying his head at a slightly awkward angle. Nafakar on the inside. And then comes Golden Horn, who's just getting into the race gradually under William Buick and going nicely. And then a gap of a length or so to Old Man River, who also starts to pick up. So it's anybody's race as they race down inside the final two and a half, Elm Park and Jack Hobbs locking horns and as they race inside the final quarter mile, Golden Horn on the left and as we look at them, beginning to get right into it as well, it's Elm Park just running around a bit in front, gave Jack Hobbs a bump here's Golden Horn on the near side who's quickening up in really good style entering the final furlong, Golden Horn and Will Buick are out in front here from Jack Hobbs and Elm Park and Golden Horn, you say, has to be impressive here because he's come from behind quickened up beautifully and he wins a Dante in great style, Golden Horn Beats Jack Hobbs, a one-two for John Cosden. And they're off for the 2018 Betfred Dante Stakes. And immediately Merlin Magic off to a good start. Doesn't seem to want to go on those. Restrained by Sylvester D'Souza. Mildenberger on the outside comes through now and is the one that takes them towards the end of the first furlong. White Mocker is settling in second place. Cross Batten on his outside, a little bit keen. Followed then by Wells Fargo's red cap. Roaring line on the inside of him. Pulling quite hard, Merlin Magic, who's reined back into sixth place now. Nordic Lights, the one who's been quite well gambled on this morning. The Royal Blue of Godolphin is next. And the last two, the Aidan O'Brien pair, James Cook leading Zabriskie at the back of the field. They've gone past the seven furlong marker over the far side of the track then at about eight lengths separates first and last and Mildenberger and James Doyle takes the Dante field along from Cross Batten in second place for Frankie de Tori. White Mocker on the inside is third Wells Fargo on the outside is fourth with between horses then Roaring Lion the grey He's just in front then of Merlin Magic, who's still inclined to take a little bit of a hold. And then on his outside is Nordic Lights, followed by James Cook, who's a length and a half clear of Zabriskie. They're turning down the side and into the home straight now with just over half a mile left to cover here in the Betfred Dante of 2018. And Mildenberger striding out in front with some purpose. Cross Batten now moving into clear second place. White Mocker on the inside. Wells Fargo poised to challenge on the outer. Roaring Lion traveling well, just behind them. Nordic lights on the move as well on the left as they come down the home straight. Up the inside, Mildenberg is trying to rally again together there with Merlin Magic and Zabriskie. James Cook a little bit outpaced but trying to stay on. Spread right across the course in the Dante. Who's going to assert? Roaring Lion splits the field and comes between them and quickens up in decent style. It's Roaring Lion inside the final furlong of the Dante who's putting daylight between himself and his rivals. He's up by three to four lengths, just edging left-handed, but he's going to run out a really impressive winner of the Dante. Roaring Lion outclasses them. And they're off for the Albasti Equiworld Dubai Dante Stakes of 2021, this Group 2 event then over the 10 and a half furlongs. Uncle Bryn is uh, restrained at the back by Frankie de Tori as Roman Empire goes on here for Holly Doyle having her first ride for Aidan O'Brien. But pulling hard in second on the inner is Flying Visit. In fact, it's Hurricane Lane that moves up into second now. Flying Visit third. Gear Up is racing on the inside of Royal Champion. High Definition is disputing sixth place with McGallan on the inside in the red cap. And then Bellocho the Grey, followed by Uncle Bryn. Pythagoras is at the very back of the field. And he's about uh, oh, 10 lengths behind the leader, maybe a bit less than that as they pass the seven furlong marker. Roman Empire making sure this is a, a decent test here as they race across the far side of the Naysmire. Leads by two and a half. In second place, Hurricane Lane. 
Flying visit still inclined to take a little bit of a hold in third on the rail there for Kevin Manning in those famous Bolger colours. Just behind them then is Royal Champion with gear up poise as they continue to turn, which brings them round to the home straight. McGallan next with high definition and Ryan Moore, who's just nudging away now on the favourite. Then comes Uncle Bryn, Bellocchio and Pythagoras in last place, but Roman Empire is really clear here, has opened up by about six lengths of the chasing pack as they come down towards the final three furlongs. They're all busy away in pursuit, looking at high definition. He hasn't picked up yet at all. Uh, Roman Empire is clear then in the Dante as they race down towards the final quarter mile. Gear Up is trying hard with McGallan to try and pick him up. Then comes Hurricane Lane, who's under a strong drive from William Buick. High definition is trying to stay on, but he's making heavy weather of this. The leader's tying up now in front Roman Empire as Hurricane Lane bears down again together with McGallan on the near side. High definition now goes fourth. They're inside the final furlong. Hurricane Lane has taken over from McGallan. High definition now running on into third place, but it's too late to win it. It goes to Hurricane Lane. He wins the Dante. And they've gone without Masakalu, who reared up in the stalls, sadly. Let's hope he's all right, being led away. Racing then for the Albasti Equiworld Dubai Dante Stakes Group 2 race. And it's White Wolf, who takes them through the first furlong of... Ten and a half of them on the outside, El Bodigon in the green and black stripes, sitting handy too is Bluegrass, pulling hard on his outside is Dark Moon Rising. Then behind them is Raw Patronage racing alongside Desert Crown. King Max is held up, Frankie's got Magisterial locked away, sitting chilly in last place as they race on towards the seven furlong marker. He's probably about seven or eight lengths behind the pace setting White Wolf in the hands of Danny Tudhope. El Bodigon and Danny Muscat racing close up in second. The only Group 1 winner in the lineup here. In third, then, is Bluegrass, Ryan Moore, followed by Dark Moon Rising. And then comes Royal Patronage, Desert Crown, at the rear of the field, racing together. King Max, who's settled nicely, together with Magisterial on his inside as they head down towards the final five furlongs of the contest here. So they've just gone past halfway in the Dante. And about seven lengths would cover them here as they race round towards the home straight. White Wolf still the leader. El Bodigon in his slipstream then as they race into the home straight here. On the outside, the nose-banded runner not in the derby is Dark Moon Rising. Shaken up to Bluegrass on the inner. Raw Patronage is beginning to improve nicely into the race. And Desert Crown likewise. And King Max making his move on the outer as Frankie tries to improve on Magisterial on his inside. Anybody's Dante as they race up towards the final quarter mile. White Wolf on the inside. Here comes Raw Patronage with a challenge. And Desert Crown on the outside is grabbing the ground in eye-catching fashion and has taken over. It's Desert Crown and Richard Kingscote from Royal Patronage in second place. A battle on for third then with running on well King Max, but Desert Crown is the leader inside the final furlong of the Dante. He's up by about two lengths from Royal Patronage, and Desert Crown stamps his mark on the season with a really fluent win. He's won it nicely. In second was Royal Patronage, then came Bluegrass, and fourth home, Dark Moon Rising.